As spring practice rolls on, the quarterbacks are developing. All possibilities can be are going to be considered. Does Drew Dickey stand a chance? Man, Diego Pavi is going to have his work cut out for him when he arrives in the summer. Let's kick it. You are Locked On Vandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Today, we're going to explore all possibilities of the quarterback position as spring practice rolls on. Um, so names like Drew Dickey and Blaze Berlowitz, do, do they have a chance? Well, I do know this. Diego Pavi is going to have his work really cut out for him when he arrives in the summer because these quarterbacks are are rolling. So um, also with the uh, spring break series that I had uh, that I ran with the uh, the all time Vandy cover stuff, I'm going to reveal the results of the the four polls that I created. And instead of like narrowing it down to like one, I just went ahead and made a cover. So we'll see that. And then lastly, congrats to Bryce Cunningham for being named SEC Pitcher of the Week. His pitching staff has become the unquestioned foundation of the team. So thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm on YouTube as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So as I said, the quarterback race is very, well, let's just say it's getting interesting, right? I, I guess that's the, the, the best way to put it. It's getting interesting because these guys are developing and these guys are starting to kind of understand the system. These guys are starting to get comfortable, and I'm not talking about just Nate Johnson, right? Um, this race is going to come down to who has command of the offense, who can – Who's the best thro- who's the best passer? I don't want to say thrower. Who's the best passer? Because there's a lot more to passing than just throwing. So um, who's gonna who who can affect the game uh, with their legs? Because I think quarterback run game is gonna be gonna be vital to what this offense does and wants to do. And honestly, who has the other intangible stuff that just can rally the guys around? Who has that it factor? You know, and Diego Pavia certainly has that it factor. You saw it when they beat Auburn. So, um, but I'm not so sure this is a runaway for Diego Pavia, honestly. I mean, you see these reports. And I know they're like spring practice reports, and I know like this is the time of year that everyone everyone looks like an All American. Everyone, you know, I realize all of that, but that still doesn't doesn't hide the fact, or it still doesn't take away from the fact that these guys are. Are balling. These guys are are getting comfortable in the system. So yeah, none of these guys are going to be named starter coming out of out of spring practice. I know that uh, because they a want to give Diego Pavia a chance, and b there's probably just not enough evaluation reps uh, to be had uh, in just 15 practice sessions with some of those being scrimmages for them to really kind of make a true decision, especially with the new offensive coordinator. <laughs> if it was an established guy and there was two guys that were already in the system a year ago that are competing and there, there were some slightly different variables. Yeah. They could probably name a starter coming out of spring, but honestly it's, it's wide open. And, and some of these guys have a chance and um, not much film, not much college film on Drew Dickey um, a little bit, of college film on Blaze Berlowitz. Um, but I, I do want to, I, I don't want to leave those guys out um, of, of this discussion because like, I don't think it's fair to them to leave them out of this discussion. Um, I know they're probably considered more of long shots. You know, Berlowitz has a lot of potential, but again, he's just very young and, and uh, Drew Dickey again, has a lot of potential, but just has not for some reason been able to put it all together when it's t- when it comes that time, so uh, these guys are, are really kind of getting a chance, a clean slate, if you will, um, to kind of show uh, Tim Beck what what they have and what they bring to the table, and and uh, you know what, and the, the the question and the question you'll see on the thumbnail does Dr- does Drew Dickey have a chance? Well, honestly speaking, I think he's a chance, but like. I still think it's a long shot because like I, I watched this tape and everything he does well, he does. He's, he's very, very solid. 
but like I don't think there's a quality with him. And when you're in a tight race like this, you've got to have there's got to be a quality out there somewhere um, that is far superior than those around you. He runs well. He's accurate. He throws a good deep ball. He has a good understanding uh, mentally of the game of football. I think I think this part of it is going to keep him involved in the race longer than anyone probably ever thought possible outside of his own family. So, um, and, and I, I give kudos to him. I and and in the the world of transfer portals and grad transfer things, you know, this he's putting from what I've heard, he's putting together some really really good tape. Um, if, you know, if this thing doesn't work out here in Nashville, I don't know if he's, I, this is all, this is based off absolutely nothing. So don't, don't run with it and saying that, Hey, Corey Burton says he's, you know, Drew Dickey's going to transfer. Not what I'm saying. Um, I'm just saying if he does want to, he has a lot of good tape out there. If, if that is an option that he would want to explore, should this thing not, not quite work out the way he wants it to. Um, so but I mean, honestly, like again, like the evaluation factors of it, uh, Blaze Berlowitz also is kind of stuck in that land of like he's good at everything, and if some circumstances were different, he he would definitely be a starter. Uh, he could definitely play uh, for Vanderbilt. But like with Diego Pavia coming in, who started over him at New Mexico State, who is an expert at the system, uh, with Nate Johnson coming in who's got superior athleticism to everybody in the room um, that does a lot of things well, but is probably more raw as a passer. So it's going to be kind of like, okay, do you want a guy that's solid at everything? Um, do you want a guy that's extremely <laughs> gifted athletically? And we can kind of just take, you know, take it as it comes with, with all the other stuff. Like that's what the evaluation process is going to be like. It's going to, it's going to come down to, like, what do we want to live with? Like, what? And honestly, the separator is probably going to be the intangible stuff. It's probably going to be, you know, can he give us a chance to, you know, when it's two minutes to go, fourth quarter, bowl, bowl bid on the line in Jordan Air Stadium, is Drew Dickey or Blaze Berlowitz going to come into that huddle and those guys are going to look at him and say, we're going to get this, Right. That's the question that's got to be answered. There's not enough reps right now to be able to answer that question. He's not in that situation. It's really hard to recreate that situation, but like that's what they're going to evaluate. Like that's what I think is is going to happen. And uh, for any one of these underdogs to kind of slide into that uh, conversation, they're going to have to become exceptional at something, whether it's mastering the playbook, whether, whether it's, you know, um, you you give them you give the coaches something in the run game that the other quarterbacks can't or you know you give them a whole nother dimension of the playbook that no one else can do like no one else can provide better than you so you know if you're an underdog you have to be extra exceptional like you don't like some of these other guys uh get a little bit more leeway as an underdog you don't you don't really get leeway and so that's that's something that people have to understand about this race and about how, how quarterback battles are, are judged because the margin of error, even for the top guys is about as thick as this piece of paper right here, right? It's about as thick as this post-it note. There ain't no margin for error for anybody. It's a very, very tight race. And these guys all have to jockey for position. These, these three guys have to jockey for position um, so that when Pavia comes in, they give him something to, to uh, to come into and and they're doing a great job of it. For, from everything that I've heard, they're developing very very well. They're going to make this decision really tough on Tim Beck. Uh, there's going to be some hard decisions coming down the pike. Like it's going to come down. Like it, we're not going to know until they begin game prep for for Virginia Tech probably. Um, and that was probably the plan all along. But like these coaches are really going to have something to think about because like. Berlowitz is turning out to be probably the best passer of the group from what I've heard, or probably most consistent. Nate Johnson has the highest ceiling with his athleticism, um, but probably has time to him and Berlowitz have probably the most time to develop. Um, and then, you know, Drew Dickey has just been, he's also been doing extremely well. I mean, I think this is a system that fits him. And 
And part of that is just because the system gives Vandy an identity, which, I mean, you can't, you can't understate that. Just having an identity makes everybody better quarterbacks and gives everybody a situation to where they can succeed in. So um, with that, I, th- I think it's going to be a fair race because I think these guys are going to get their chances. I think these guys are going to get chances to not just run the plays that are called and, and say, okay, well, you, I mean, leave it up to getting the, the luck of the draw as far as the call sheet goes. Like, I, I think there's – I think this coaching staff is good enough to have tailored plans for what these guys do well. And I think they probably spent the first week trying to figure out, okay, Drew Dickey is good at X, Y, Z. Okay. You know, Nate Johnson is good at, you know, TRW Uh, and Blaze Berlowitz is good at ABC. All right. And so like they, they list these qualities out and then Tim Beck probably goes in his system is like, okay, well, you know, we're going to give Nate this set of plays. We're going to give Blaze this set of plays. We're going to give uh, Drew this set of plays. And we're going to see what they do. So, again, I, I think it's a really good indicator of what they can do. And I think it's going to be something that is to be monitored. And I'm going to have Kurt Page on later on this week, um, hopefully on tomorrow's episode, for like a little midweek um, bonanza here with uh, with Kurt Page. But – um, you know, I'm going to talk to him about kind of the the updates of the, the quarterback battles and just just really kind of what he sees and what he's hearing. He's got his ear even more to the to uh, to the beat than than I do. So um, it'll be fun to hear from him. It's always good to talk ball with Kurt Page. I mean, I I coached with him. Him and I kind of see eye to eye on a lot of a lot of concepts and things like that. So it'll be be a lot of fun uh, to catch up with Kurt uh, once again. So. Um, but this this quarterback race is going to come down to uh, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to see, and uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get this thing. We're, they're going to get this thing right, and and whoever wins it is going to win it. It's not going to be like, uh, you know, I feel like in years past it was kind of like uh, you, you know, like blindfold you and like pin the tail on the quarterback, right? Like that's who starts. It just kind of felt like that. It didn't feel like they had a plan. They didn't have an identity or whatever. And that's probably why – that's probably what shook Clark Lee awake, truthfully, which was a good thing. Glad it happened. For, you know, I think Clark Lee's a good coach. I was a little leery of him, uh, his head coaching abilities. But, you know, different topic, different day. He's really kind of – come out of a shell a little bit, which is good. So anyway, uh, I did a four point, I did a four part series where you voted on uh, all time players that would, uh, that would land themselves on the cover of EA sports college football 25. We're going to talk about those results next. All right. LinkedIn jobs. When you're hiring for your small businesses, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. All right. All right. Welcome back to segment number two locked on Vandy podcast on the locked on podcast network. Are you watching Fox sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or free 
at the Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, um, talking about the EA Sports cover, that, this this project was a lot of fun. Uh, this this whole series, it was a it was a, a pre recorded vacation series uh, that that I had um, where I could have a little fun uh, in early March with uh, you know pre stack getting fired, which the timing of all that happened perfectly as far as timing for like programming on the show. But um, this was a lot of fun uh, narrowing it down, kind of seeing you guys' opinions. I, I first reached out and asked, you know, get an idea and a consensus for like 12 names. There was, you know, there was some disagreements and some guys that probably were left off like uh, Javon Hay, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, uh, some of the some of the older players, Kurt Page um, was was probably left out um, and shouldn't have been. Like there were some guys that probably, if the list was expanded or a little differently, like if we did position lists, they probably would would have made it. But um, you know, had to had to you know with twelve, you, you know, you have to cut somebody. So um, it sucks, but you know, it just has to be done. So I ran uh, ran polls, and this is the the four daily winners. So what I was going to do was going to uh, uh, create this cover um, based on um, after I named the four daily winners, I was going to put them against each other and, and do like a solo winner. So um, that didn't necessarily, well, I mean, it worked well, but then I started putting together the cover and well, I had a student involved. I teach, you know, where, where I teach and a uh, student by the name of Joe Sean Grace. Um, he, uh, he created this cover for me, gave him the project, told him what I wanted, uh, and this is what came about. So, behold, uh, the results of the polls. So you have Jay Cutler, Jordan Matthews, uh, Jamie Winborn, and Earl Bennett. Those were the those were the na- those were the winners. And this background image uh, behind Earl and Jamie Winborn is just a kind of a stock Vandy photo, uh, kind of a cool looking shot uh, that's black and white. But this is. Uh, this was a really, really good job uh, done by Joe Sean. It's you know he captured the true essence of this uh, of this cover. Um, did a really, really outstanding job with the uh, you know just kind of the uh, compositing. He found some really great images. I didn't feed him these images at all. He just found some really, really good ones that that worked. Like this Jay Cutler one is outstanding. It kind of fits perfectly with. Uh, with uh, Jordan Matthews and just kind of the way they're posed, they're they're contrasting there. You have the two star V's and the two different helmets, and then like you have the different the different things going on, which is which is outstanding. And then uh, you know Earl Bennett, you know the way he's positioned and things like that. I mean this this thing just worked, man. And when I saw this, I was like, well, there's no need to carry it in any further uh, than this because this is absolutely. Perfect. So this was the result of those shows. So if you're so if you were sitting back and wondering what the heck were you, you know, what the heck was the point of those shows? I just wanted to have a little fun, uh, talk about some things that weren't like analysis, 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 like speculation, speculation, speculation. Um, and it was a little bit of a slow time because it was right before um, Stackhouse got let go. Um, spring practice hadn't started yet. So the football stories were, were dry and a little rerun and, uh, baseball was, um, you know, baseball was, was going, but they were, they were still, you know, they were playing Illinois state or something like that coming weekend. So it's like not, you know, you know, when I recorded these, it wasn't like I was, uh, you know, it was earth shattering. Uh, so, this is this is the result of it, and this is something that that I enjoyed doing. That uh, Joe Sean I know enjoyed doing, and this was a this was a fun project to kind of like put this together. It was fun to talk about all of these guys. I mean, all, all twelve of these guys deserve to be on this cover. If, if if we're being honest, I mean, there's some you know there's some guys, some of the left out guys, also the guys that didn't make the twelve, also deserve to be on this cover too. But um, and. I can have him make different covers of different combinations of Danny athletes and things like that to show you guys. But this is kind of where it's at. And this is, this is, this was a lot of fun. And this was something that I enjoyed talking about uh, something I enjoyed learning about, like some of the players and what they accomplished at Vanderbilt. Some of the ones I didn't know, like Corey Chavis and 
Jamie Winborn, and I didn't know a whole lot about their college playing days um, because you know I didn't see I didn't see them or were or were aware of them until they got to the NFL. Jamie Duncan was somebody uh, that kind of made the list. Um, some of the offensive linemen. Uh, I saw Jordan Matthews, Earl Bennett, and Jay Cutler play. I was in college uh, when Cutler was coming through, and then uh, ta- you know the very beginning of Earl Bennett, and then like Jordan Matthews. I saw him when I was up here in Nashville. Um, with with James Franklin things like that. So this was uh, again, this was one of those that was just kind of kind of fun to put together, and uh, it it uh, came together pretty quickly. Um, the two on the front cover, uh, one by the largest margins, uh, and then the two on the back cover, one but not not as big of a margin. So uh, this was uh, you know just learning some things about them stat wise, just how big of an impact a lot of these guys had. Uh, on their teams and things like that. So um, that's it right there. That's the cover of EA Sports College Football 25, if it were reflective of an all-time Vandy player. So um, pitching has been uh, has been outstanding for Vanderbilt. I mean, that you, you can't get it much better uh, with the pitching staff. Uh, had a very stellar weekend against Missouri. Uh, it tends to be – has been the foundation of the team this entire year and has only gotten better. And there's been a couple of injuries, but they've shuffled some things around and they've added some quality key depth. So we'll talk about that here in just a minute. All right. Talking about eBay motors, passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts needed at the prices that you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that hu- and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, here we go. Uh, third and final segment here on the Locked On Vandy Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. Thank you. To the everydayers, you can follow the show on social media at Locked On Vandy on X and Instagram. Uh, follow us there. Uh, here's my X account at Coach Burton thirty six and at Coach Corey Burton on Instagram. So, uh, first of all, this pitching staff is outstanding. All right, uh, and second of all, this pitching staff wouldn't be outstanding without the brilliant efforts of one Bryce Cunningham. He was named SEC pitcher of the week um, as, uh, as of um, this after or this morning on Monday, uh, Cunningham, he pitched seven scoreless innings, registered 12 strikeouts while allowing just one hit on Friday night versus Missouri. Cunningham allowed just three base runners over seven innings in route to the, his fourth win of the season. Um, and his 12 strikeouts led all sec pitchers on the week. So uh, he's been somebody that's been, brilliant all year um and not always has it led to wins because either errors or run support or uh some you know one bad luck inning that that gets him behind but um for the most part bryce cunningham has been absolutely outstanding and it it's just kind of a microcosm of the depth that this pitching staff has displayed um and this is uh and this is going to come well. This is going to bode well for uh, for postseason time because, like hit like teams that that hit that have okay decent pitching, don't usually make it very far. And Vanderbilt knows that. And Vanderbilt has built around their pitching staff. They have. Don't get me wrong. Vanderbilt has really really good hitters. They have hitters that can that can get you in trouble um, and make you pay if you make mistakes as an opposing pitcher. But I, with with some of the scores, some of the run outputs and the run totals uh, from this weekend against a very subpar Missouri team, 
um, leads me to believe that pitching is giving them an opportunity to work through some of these slumps. Occasionally, they'll break out. But this is probably a very, very streaky situation. And I said this on yesterday's show, and, and uh, it was in response to an Aria Garrison post uh, from, from X that this uh, the, that the hitters you get in college probably aren't as consistent um, as you would in the major leagues because it's a ceiling floor situation. Either you have a high floor uh, with probably a, that probably usually comes with a low ceiling or you have a high ceiling with an extremely low floor, which gives you a lot of this, you know, you know, four for four for the cycle. Boom. Oh, for oh, for five, with five strikeouts, three for four with three doubles and like seven runs batted in three strikeouts, a walk and, and the ground out, you know, just like those type of performances. So, in order to kind of win with that, and a lot of a lot of these teams face that inconsistency because if they didn't, those guys would be probably playing in the major leagues. But to uh, to fight against that, I think you have to find and develop good pitching. And in order to do so, you have to have guys that are willing to start midweek and play roles within the bullpen, which it's – with with the more and more specialization in uh, in sports, especially baseball, you're starting to get the idea that like there's specialty pitchers. Like, hey, I only throw out of the pen, or I only throw in the seventh inning, or if I don't start, I'm going to be crap. You know, like that kind of thing. And it's really hard to transition. Like, you start you start a game on Wednesday, and then Saturday you're you're called in in the eighth inning with two runners on and one out and you got to get out of this jam. Well, phew, you got to crank up like that, right? You got to flip your mind on. You got to, you got to get into it like that. Starters have a mentality of, they just kind of, they just kind of groove their way into the game. And, you know, by the, by the second, third inning, they're kind of dialed in first inning. If they can get through unscathed, that's like freaking house money. Almost. You can't do that as a reliever and you have to switch mindsets, which is really, really difficult to do, really tough to do. So um, I'm impressed with some of these guys that can do that, like Ethan McIlvain um, being at, you know, J.D. Thompson. You know, those those two especially, they can be midweek starter guys and then come come out of the pen and pitch quality, quality innings. Um, and, and that's what kind of helps your foundational thing. Like that's what helps make pitching your extremely rock-solid foundation because you have a really good pen and you have a really good – uh, list of starters, which you have a really good spot starter in Grayson Carter. Uh, Devin Futrell uh, did not start this weekend, um, but uh, you know you had Grayson Carter, Carter Holton, and Bryce Cunningham uh, getting starts this weekend. So you're starting to see uh, you're starting to see Tim Corbin play around with that a little bit and 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 toy with the rotations and things. I don't know if that seven strikeout uh, eight in the third inning. Uh, appearance that Grayson Carter had on Thursday will keep him in the starting rotation this weekend, this coming weekend in a series in this, in this weekend series. But I, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. That's a, that's a tough decision, but come postseason baseball, you're going to need Futrell, Carter, Holton, and Cunningham all to be pitching on point as starters because you're going to like over the gauntlet of an SEC tournament, over the gauntlet of a regional, over the gauntlet of a super regional, you're going to need your pen. And you can't have your pen pitching four or five innings day in and day out. Right? You can't have those guys pitching like that. You have to have starters that can go deep, which Vanderbilt is now conditioning those guys to be able to go deep into games and they're and they're actually paying off right all three wins starter goes deep you know goes deep into the game and that's what you need like you need those to preserve these bullpen guys because these bullpen guys are going to be you know the starters are extremely vital because if they don't score in the first seven innings they, they kind of lose momentum but like you put the wrong bullpen guy in, like you you, you you come out of the pen and you're having an off night, that game can turn just like that. Boom. And uh, it can turn on a dime. So never uh, never take that for granted, honestly. But uh, you know, I you know, as a baseball fan, I love pitching 
and what pitching does and what pitching means uh, to a series, what it means to postseason play, things like that. Because pitching, you know the talk, you know the saying, uh, money talks, BS walks. That is uh, that is the sign. Like pitching, pitching is the money. Hitting is the, you know, or they say in golf, uh, dry for show, putt for dough. You know, dry for show, pitch for dough. You can use that saying if you want to. But uh, anyway, with that, pitching is the foundation. Bryce Cunningham is he's he was a dog this weekend, and hopefully that's uh. That's something that can continue for uh, for this pitching staff. So with that being said, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. Um, we'll see you back here tomorrow, hopefully with Kurt Page. I uh, got him on the hook for one of these days this week, I believe. So we'll hear from him, and uh, and we'll have more spring football talk, some, hopefully some more basketball news, and definitely more baseball. So uh, with that being said, we'll see you back here tomorrow. But until then, behave yourself and anchor down.